beautiful hot weather nice to be able to sit outside bistro square and have a wee drink like the main area where the fringe events are it was just so good to be back in edinburgh i can't lie bed again was absolutely phenomenal 100 percent in my top three gigs like unreal the atmosphere and the crowd was amazing we had actually quite a good space um we we're quite near the front but i didn't actually realize how busy the event was and then i saw tiktoks afterwards and people were filming from like way 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 up the back so I, there was a lot of people there a hundred percent lived up to all expectations played all the good songs played some absolutely amazing unreleased songs they were all bangers found one of these unreleased songs on soundcloud i've had it on at the gym all week since and it really helps get me through my workouts <laughs> something so funny happened afterwards we were at the tram stop waiting for absolute yonks we were at the tram stop for like an hour plus like it was mental every tram that drove past us was full and like you could barely get on so the mood was quite low for everyone they were knackered they just wanted to get back into the city it was dead silent and then some boy behind us was just standing there and he was like, pull me up again. So one of Freddie's biggest songs is um, Pull Me Out Of This. <laughs> The guy just completely got got the lyrics wrong and it was dead silent and I know I'm so immature because I let out a cackle. I couldn't help it. Everyone knew that that was not the lyric and this guy just did not give a shit. He was full on. He just sang the wrong one. The tram stop was dead silent. Fake fan, name five songs. But when we eventually got back, it wasn't until like half 12, it took us about two hours to get home from... Ingolstown which should have been like a half hour tops or something. Well we were gonna go out but then honestly I was so dead after we just decided to stay in. To make up for it we're gonna go back up to Edinburgh later on in the year and do it proper. So there's no like event, there's no like time that we have to be somewhere for. We can just like go free willy nilly and have a good time at all my old uni night out spots. Little Miss Nova has spent the afternoon digging. We don't have grass. So what the heck should you be digging? <gasps> so Miss Novi has been attending puppy classes. Nova, how do you think puppy classes are going? Nova performs so well at puppy classes. She listens to the teacher. She walks really nice with me. So I'm taking her on a walk and I'm like, right, this is going to be a doddle now. We don't have grass, so when she goes to the park, it's like a very exciting experience for her because it's a different texture on her feet. So she walks absolutely fine walking to the park. Like she gets so excited and she starts to like run like a little rabbit. See, since she gets to the park, something just switches in her brain and she goes batshit crazy. She runs, runs, runs so fast, runs around in a circle and then proceeds to jump up and hang on to my trousers, making the most disgusting growl noise. It's actually mortifying. Everyone who walks past me in the park laughs and I'm like, keep telling her to sit. She does not listen. It's almost as if she goes with a vendetta, just let's wind up Auntie Jo. But then as soon as she gets back onto the pavement, she's a princess. In that case, I think the concept of puppy classes is absolutely hilarious. It's almost as if it's like a nursery 
that babies and toddlers go to. I'll walk in and then they've got like a wee tick box. It's like, oh, who have we got here? Oh, here's Nova. Here's Fergus. Here's Lucy. It's like they tick off all the wee dogs just unite together. They all say hi to each other. They get so excited. Nova and this cockapoo actually jumped up together and hugged each other. My heart honestly melted. Both the arms were on top of each other. It was it was the sweetest thing ever. Yeah, I think the concept's so funny. It's like, has your dog been behaving? Mm, my dog's not been behaving either. It's just so sweet. They have a wee community to all get together and have fun. And she gets so excited when she sees the other dogs. <laughs> This is September already. This year is flying in. It'll be Santa Hats and Advent Calendar before we know it. It's that sort of weather where one day you wake up and it's scorching and you burn yourself, aka me yesterday, burnt my chest, sat in the sun for like three hours and actually was red, or it's Baltic and you need your body warmer. Today's Sunday and it's a day where you have to get done. If I go to Aldi and do not buy butter to replace my mum's butter which I used up all of yesterday to make a delicious banana loaf. I think she'll kill me. I'm not really here for this pale girl winter. I really wish I had my summer holiday cat. That was absolutely banging. I just felt like such a golden goddess. En route to the gym now. I can really see it far enough. No cap, my shoulders are on absolute fire. I did my gym workout which was a killer enough. Then I went to Asda and decided to somehow fill two shopping bags full of um, food for the week. Knowing fine well that I have to walk home, which is a 20 minute walk. And I was like, it's fine, don't need a lift from anyone. I'm burning. You're probably thinking, Joanne, why did you not just drive? Like, you pass your test in October. I hate driving, can't lie. I do not enjoy it. Like, some people get such a de-stress when they hop in the car, crank up the tunes, go for a wee bit flurry or whatever. That sounds like my worst nightmare and someone's holding a gun to my head if I voluntarily try to do that. Now my driving test situation is a bit complex. Basically, in short, seven years ago when I was 17, I started learning when I was 17 and then it took me like a year to be confident enough to do my test. So I did my test when I was 18, that's how it is. So 18 and I failed my test three times. I know. First test completely deserved to fail, almost caused serious injury for both me and the examiner. Second test I failed because I went 25 on a flashing 20. A wee bit of leeway with that one, but to, again, I didn't see the sign, it was tucked behind the tree, so like, and I wasn't confident in that route, so like, if I was in an examiner, I would have personally let that one slide and just said, be more aware of flashing 20s. Third test. I know you're all gonna be with me on this one. Did not deserve to fail. Tap the curb on my maneuver. Tap the curb on my blooming parallel park. And that's why I failed. So after I had failed for the third time, I was literally like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, fake the DVLA. I don't give a sh I was living in Edinburgh for uni at that point. So whenever I would come home, I would do my test, having not driven for like months at a time. So I would do the one hour before the test and then do the test and see to be fair see for failing only for the flashing 20 and the tapping the curb after having not driven for months that's actually quite decent but anyway i decided last year like come on joanne you're 24 now get this license ticked off like you need it eventually this time last year actually it was september i started um lessons again so i had five lessons five one hour lessons with a new instructor because i was way way too embarrassed to go back to the previous one. Sat my test past first time. What? Sat my test past first time. Bear in mind, I did opt for the 8.20 test on a Sunday morning. Cause I thought if I fail that when it's dead and it's on a Sunday morning, there's no cars on the road, like I was virtually the only car, then we have a major problem. Maybe I just shouldn't be behind a wheel, but I passed. And to be honest, I personally think more error went on on that test than it did on my test from like six years ago when I tapped the curb because on the test that I passed on when I did my reverse bay park uh, my whole front end was hanging out because I was 
I was so anxious and paranoid that like I wasn't in the space uh, like in between the lines and then the guy was like, oh, you finished? And I was like, oh yeah, buddy, I'm, I think I'm done. And he was like, your car's hanging out the front. And I was literally like, oh my God, Joanne, if that's why I failed, I'm gonna be livid. And then he also asked me to roll down my windows, just as like a wee thing when you're driving. He's like, okay, Joanne, when you're ready, can you just roll down your um, passenger window? And I hadn't did that before my instructor's car. So I didn't really know where they were and I was too busy to keep my eyes on the road to look down. So I just shoved my hand to the side and I pressed all buttons. So every window in the car just came down. And then obviously it was, I did my test in October, so it was bloody freezing and all this wind's coming in. And then I left them down and I was like, yep, yeah, you can just uh, pop those windows up whenever you're ready. And I was like, oh, I need to pop them back up. So I again fiddling around with the buttons and then like I ended up putting up like three out of the four windows and just left my window down the full time I was like because I, I didn't want to take my eyes off the road because it was like we I didn't want that to end bad and then also it was coming to a double junction so like you have to make a you have to make a sharp left and a sharp right so it's like doom doom there was a man crossing the road and I almost hit him I actually almost hit the man and then this new rule came in last year where pedestrians you have to let them cross or something like I don't really, I don't really know, know it too well, but I'm pretty sure it's something to do with you have to let a pedestrian cross if you s see them. And I full on, literally, the guy had to jump out of the way of the car. But when he said I'd pass, I actually couldn't believe it. I was like, I've waited six years for this moment. I was like, thank. I was like, I didn't even give about driving to be honest. Like I wasn't like choking to get a car or anything because that's just an expense that I'm not willing to pay the now. I just need to get my license ticked off. Big weight lifted. I've got on the CV and hope I never have to use it. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone from the DVL you watch this and think, oh gosh, that girl did not deserve to pass, um, don't worry about me. I'm never on the road anyway, so it's okay. I need to have my breakfast. Ice latte and protein shake coming. <laughs> look today. I've got my rosemary oil in, scraped back, my Nivea on, and a coffee in hand, ready to start my week. Still got cold sores though, let's actually just not talk about that. I didn't even address them, but they're so noticeable. That's just something I've had to deal with since I was a youngster and they suck, but they're normal. I'm just about to start my working week. It's almost 9am, ready to log on and see what's on the agenda for today. Marketing Joe has entered the chat. It was good to sit outside with little Nobi Bear this morning and have a cheeky wee cup of coffee. Really just trying to make the most of this sunshine whilst we've got it because it is September now. As I said earlier, what the heck. Physically can't believe that we're on the later months of the year. I hope everyone's week is as beautiful as the glorious sunshine which we have outside. Thank you so much for watching.